All right, guys, less than three days, about two and a half days left until PR4 is released. I'm excited. I don't know if you guys are excited, but I'm excited because a new season means a new interesting uh, things added to the game that people can work on long term. Super, super exciting. Super, super exciting. Now, as the video says, I will be um, doing my wish list and what I expect to see from these upcoming ships. Now, they could, they're going to be wrong, probably, most likely. Probably 99.9% .9 sure they're going to be wrong. But that doesn't mean I'm gonna, not going to make a video out of it. I'm still going to because this is fun. This is exhilarating. I'm excited. I want to see what's coming to this game near you. So, I want to talk about it. I wrote this um, about maybe um, probably like I think a week was it a week ago or two weeks ago? Um, a how, uh, uh, what I expect from this upcoming uh, ship release. But I'll probably add more to it. I'll probably add more, way more to this uh, list that I have here as of right now. But let's talk about it. Starting with um, E-Girl. I know people are going to call her Ager or whatever. But I'm going to call her E-Girl. I, I said a while back, I'm going to call her E-Girl. So, um, I did say here that it was going to be a tough slot. But if... I read up after some researching that she has AP proficiency. So as a as a large cruiser and AP, I can always safely say that she's going to be pretty good. Now, the problem is, um, some people told me that she uses torpedoes. Now, I'm not sure if this is actually going to transfer over that she is going to use torpedoes. Maybe she will. Maybe she won't. I'm not sure. Uh, but if she does, it'll be interesting to see how that goes about. Uh, her, she's kind of like Odin, but not really. So, interesting how that's going to turn out. But, if she has some sort of, uh, kind of like self buff or whatever, like Azuma has for herself, I can easily see her being a really, really good ship. Probably on par with Drake. Assuming she gets a pretty sizable, decent gun. Uh, that's AP bound. She could be pretty, pretty good. Along there with Drake. I can easily see that happening. Assuming she has what I'm looking for. I can definitely see her being up there with Drake. Now, the issue is, Torpedo Slot, not a big fan of. Also, um, I'm probably going to talk about this later, or right now, actually, I'll do it right now. Uh, for UR guns, or the UR gear for this season, I'm expecting a UR Ryuse of some sort, or a UR Large Cruiser gun. Because as of right now, those two slots are probably the only available slots as of right now in the game that don't have UR gear that's going to be worth quote unquote grinding for. Because if you're going to add a UR gear for that season, it best but better be like really, really damn good. Otherwise, a lot of people, including myself, I'm not going to go for it. If it's not super, super good, I'm not going to go for it. With that being said, if they do do a rainbow uh, plane or whatever, it has to be Ryusei's because Ryusei's are the only relevant damage slot available on planes because converging torpedoes, big damage, destroys medium and heavy armor. It is a really, really good slot for damage. So I can see that happening. It has to be a really, really good plane too. I'm talking like maybe like, maybe like four bombs. Ryusei's have three, uh, three torpedoes. So this one maybe have four or something. And the UR large cruiser gun. If they do this as well, it's probably going to be for a uh, um, e girl's weapon or whatever. It's probably going to be pretty damn nuts if she does get the UR uh, gun or whatever. But we'll have to see. As always, we gotta wait until two and a half days to see what kind of gear is going to get the UR gear for this season. Interesting, interesting. Uh, but for e girl though, I'm expecting her. To basically be a better Ozuma. Now she probably won't be as tanky. Because people are saying that. But I really don't care about tankiness in this game. That much compared to some people. So I'd rather have a lot more damage. And Ego fits, fits that slot perfectly fine. With her AP efficiency and whatnot. But again we got to see the kit. I got to see her efficiencies. I got to see her guns. And so forth. Now the second one. We have Haku. Haku, I don't think I have to talk about this one. I'm, I'm pretty confident most people nowadays, up until this point, think she's pretty, pretty busted. Why? Because uh, Manju said about a year ago that they didn't release Haku with PR3 because, quote-unquote, she's too busted. She's too powerful. Whatever the excuse was, 
Um, whether that was a good excuse or bad excuse, who knows? I think it's a horrible excuse, but that's what they said. So, with that being said, if they are releasing her this year, and they said last year that she's quote-unquote very, very powerful, and that's why they didn't release her, I better see her being godly unstoppable for this season. So, what's she going to have? Who knows? I do not know at, at all uh, what she's going to get. I'm hoping at least two torpedo, torpedo bomber slots. Because if it's not at least tor two torpedo bomber slots, we're going to have problems. And she now is probably going to be way better than that. So, I'm expecting at least two torpedo bomber slots. Very, very powerful. Very, very um, damage oriented. If you guys haven't noticed yet, all the PR shifts we had up until now, one, two, uh, seasons 1, 2, and 3, none of them have a buff that is stat-wise to any other ships. So, like, no auras, no, like, barrage or... Or whatever to buff other ships in the in the party or the fleet it's purely self buff and very very self oriented uh, ships in PR so I don't expect Haku to have a buff I'm expecting her to be an an amazing man amazing damage dealer specifically speaking she's gonna have siren killer uh, which is a skill granted to PR ships that lets them do 15% more damage to sirens making her a really really good contender to be one of the best uh, planes if not the best contender for damage output in uh, OS content so I can see that happening I don't have much to say about her I think she's gonna be a very very good fit probably gonna fit her with the uh, the Shinan uh, we'll, we'll call her the the Haku uh, Nanato setup so uh, Haku Ryu Shinano and Nagato setup or if you want to do the triple carrier setup probably something like Haku um, Haku Shinano or Shokaku with Centaur something like that I can also see that happening a lot so nothing much to talk about her I think she's probably gonna be super super powerful the first UR uh, carrier for PR ship in the game I can see that happening now Marco Polo this is probably just copium talking right here but I expect uh, Marco Polo to have some sort of like fast reload or at least a preload of some sort for her kit I know I know it's not gonna happen or whatever copium yeah I get it but somewhere deep inside me I think her kit is gonna be pretty damn good for whatever it is it's gonna be pretty damn good now I did some research and people mentioned as well too she has some stuff to do with super heavy shells or whatever or super armor piercings or whatever I really don't care I, I, I like SAP I, I really don't care so um, I'm expecting her to be somewhat decent. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah, copium talk. I think she's going to be okay, though, but we'll see. Now, uh, August Von Parsifal. I did a poll uh, about a day and a half ago or something. A lot of people like this ship. So, um, I'm going to break it to you guys. I'm going to say some things about her that you guys may not like. Again, it's my predictions. Think whatever you want. You can ignore me for this section. I don't care. I skip to anchor, uh, anchorage section. Go for it. I split it up for you guys. So you guys can go ahead and watch that part if you want to. So with that being said, I don't think August Von Parsifal is going to be super, super great. Why? Many, many reasons. First, she's a carrier, right? Carrier slots as of right now is very, very, very competitive. First of all, we have the carriers that you use in World 13 a lot, the USS carriers, Enterprise, SX, classes and whatnot you have all those ships that are really good in world 13 right and then you have the torpedo bomber damage dealing uh sh carriers for os uh shinano centaur shokaku arc royal ships like those are very very good there so where's this leave us august von parzival is a kms a carrier yes you can slot her in with like peter strasser and bismarck to do some more damage output and whatnot but if you guys don't know already Peter Strasser and Graf Zeppelin set up, it does okay damage, but the reason why they aren't god tier is because they're lacking an extra torpedo bomber slot. Most of the strongest carriers in this game have two torpedo bomber slot because Ryusei's are just that powerful. They're just that powerful. So, in order for August Von Parsifal to be at least somewhat decent, I say for her kit, she has to have some sort of buff. Similar to how Peter Strasser gets a buff to all carriers if there's like four ca uh, Iron Blood ships in the fleet. But like I said before with Haku, um, as of right now, there are no PR ships that give a team buff 
that stat wise so like no aviation buff no firepower buff no reload buff to all ships it's mainly self steroids so if you're gonna be if you're gonna make august von parsifal a dps carrier first of all she has to compete with many many other battle uh carriers in the game like arc royal shinano and all those but she can at least excel in a full kms fleet and i know there's a lot of lot of uh iron blood fans out there so if you want to do that go for it which is why i wrote here if you're uh Unless you want to go for like triple KMS CV memes or whatever, or Bismarck with two CV, I don't think she's going to be super, super that good though. But she looks like catching, and people love Genshin Impact, so there you go. And lastly, Anchorage. Now, Anchorage, there's a size, there's like a decent amount of heavy cruisers out there for USS. We have Baltimore, San Francisco. Bremerton's okay and such uh, so forth. She's gonna have a semi decent time. Well, actually, no, I think her fitting will be perfectly fine with the full USS, though. Uh, assuming you don't want to use Helena for a boss fleet, you can do like Helena, San Francisco, and Anchorage. I could see that happening. Um, otherwise, if she's not that durable, she doesn't offer that much, you're probably gonna slide in Baltimore if you want to run full USS. However, if you want to put Helena in the boss fleet, you could probably do something like Anchorage, um, uh, Baltimore, and then San Francisco or whatever. I'm expecting at least some kind of durability from her kit is what I want. So maybe she could fit there. Got to see her kit though. I don't think she's going to be that bad. Unless, unless you're comparing her with every other heavy cru cruisers in the game. Okay, maybe we're going to have problems. But if you're gonna run like straight USS though, like what I say about August von Parsifal, if you're strict, if you're sticking to strict factions, she they'll probably be okay. They'll probably be okay. Anyways though, um, my biggest takeaways here, Haku, I think it's gonna be unbelievably powerful, as everyone expects already. Um, no doubt in my mind, with what Manju said last year about them not releasing Haku because they believe it's she's too powerful. Honestly. My my take as to why they they didn't release a uh, Haku back then was because they want to do five uh, PR ships per season, not only to give people um, more time and less hassle to grind up the ships and get them uh, maxed out, uh, but it also gives them more breathing room to add more World of Warship collab ships in the future for other future seasons like PR four, PR five, PR six. If you're doing one less ship per season, that gives you one more ship to add on to another season. That's what I truly, truly believe. Anyways, Haku, I think it's going to be super, super powerful. Ager, if she's really, really uh, AP-based with some kit uh, design like Azuma's but for AP, I think she's going to be super, super good along there with Drake. Marco Polo, Copium Talk, I think she's going to be good too, especially in PvP. Who knows? I think she's going to be good in PvP. Going to have to wait on that. And August von Parsifal and Anchorage, um, I think will be okay in their own... Uh, specific factions but if you play outside factions gotta see i don't think they're gonna be super super good but who knows anyways those are my predictions those are what i'm expecting two and a half days we will find out whether i'm right or wrong and so forth bye guys see you on the next video